Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the Overflow. My name is Micah Curtis. And I'm Alex Baldwin, also known as the Hat Man. And uh, for those who don't know, the Overflow is the show every week. Well, we try to make it every week where we discuss the questions that sadly we were unable to get to during the course of the Q&A during our podcast. So, and if you missed the podcast, of course, we're it's every Saturday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, before we get started, I think, though, that we should probably address the whole Notre Dame thing. Um, yeah. Because I feel like if we wait to the podcast, we're probably going to, it's going to come across like old news. Just a real quick five minute thing. Um, so, from what I'm hearing, not a terror attack, looks like an accident. Yeah, they've ruled out, um, the French authorities, of course, have, have ruled out um, arson and terror as uh, the, the cause of the fire. So, right now, it, it's looking like an accident. Um, related to the restoration work that was going on. Um, most of the uh, artwork and the relics, I believe like 90 to 95% of them were saved. Yep. Um, they were brought out of the cathedral um, before they could be damaged. Um, two of the rose windows are still intact. One has been lost. And... I believe that's it. There's there's actually a really awesome looking picture of um, the the inside of the church and the altar, mm -hmm. and you know everything is you know all rubble and stuff. And altar the was golden untouched. cross, the golden cross in the center there. Yeah, that was yeah, that was something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a damn shame. It is. It's heartbreaking. One one thing that I would that I would tell people is is that it's. Especially if you consider yourself a Christian. Because one question I get asked a lot is, where, where is God in, in all of this? It's like, God is in the two-thirds of the church that are still there. God is in the moment where you open the door to this and the cross is there undamaged and untouched. It's a reminder that he hasn't gone anywhere. That at the end of the day, bricks, mortar, wood can be replaced, rebuilt... It's faith that's important. And I had some people who were getting angry at me about... Or not at me, but about people like taking selfies outside of it who happen to be of a certain other Abrahamic religion. Or what have you. And some people being edgy on the internet saying, Oh, it's, it's a good thing that it was burning. Ball. Look. Where does God want your thoughts in that particular matter? Does he really want you wasting your time getting angry at these people who are misguided or things along those lines? Does he really want you to hate them? Think about that for a second. The, because the answer is pretty obvious. The answer is no. He doesn't want you to. Pray for those who persecute you. Because we, you have to keep in mind, it can be rebuilt. It will be. We know that it will be. Keep your eyes on Jesus, and you'll find that things like this, you start to get a different perspective, a better perspective, on even the most terrible of situations. So, let's go ahead and get to the questions. So, Hatman, as always, you get to choose politics or entertainment. Oh, damn, I don't have my coin with me this time. Um... I Actually, I think I'll keep the politics first, so let's change things up and go with entertainment. All right. So, to get it started, Autis Whisper wants to know, thoughts on Tim Pool suing game studio D.O.W. over the name Subverse? We may get a porn game developer and a journalist going to court. <sighs> well, um, at the end of the day, when it comes to the courts, it's going to be who filed the trademark first. Yeah. So if yep. Tim if Tim did, he's got the trademark. He owns it. You know if they did, Tim doesn't. It's pretty cut and dry. You have to um, defend your trademark too, because if you if you don't actively protect it, which means you know take legal action against people who may be using it, then 
um, the patent office, I believe that trademark patent office. Anyway, uh, that office will will consider it to basically be defunct, mm-hmm. um, or lapsed, what it, what have you. I'm gonna forget the the proper term. For lapsed it, but, is the right term. Okay, um, but yeah. Uh, so whoever owns it, you know, whoever is the first one, and if they've been defending it, then they get it. Brian Gilmartin wants to know, what's our thoughts on the nutcase who attacked Bret Hart during the WWE Hall of Fame? Well, (laughs) he got a thorough thrashing for what he did. Um, Apparently, it was some mixed martial arts guy, an amateur, not not a well-known dude. Um, And... I mean, the guy's... He got arrested, he's getting charged... You know, Brett was none the worse for wear. I just think to myself, it's like... I was genuinely wondering what the motivation was. I had in my head the worst case scenario of an MMA bro. Who gets really, really angry about professional wrestling even existing. Probably because he had a a sibling who watched Raw as War back in the 90s. And then got all butt mad and decided to attack Bret Hart or something. When, when it was said it was an MMA fighter, I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to be right here. <laughs> but no, he got the guy got what he deserved. Because you got to keep something in mind. There is an old professional wrestling tradition of if you attack somebody involved with the show, one of the performers, you are going to get your ass beat by the talent. They will drop everything and start hitting you to get you out of the ring. Because it's a show. It's not real. And it goes back to days before the business was exposed like it is, where people still thought it was real. Because you had guys like heels, like the four horsemen, you know, Ric Flair, Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson, uh, Tully Blanchard, who would get people who would attack them. Jesse Ventura will tell you a story about one time he got threatened with a knife down in the South. You know, and thankfully an undercover police officer stopped what was going on. Like, wrestling shows used to be pretty hostile. Um, Michael P.S. Hayes, one of the the Fabulous Freebirds, said that it would be pretty regular that he would go out to the parking lot after a show and his tires would be slashed. You know, it was was just part of the business. So, that is just a tradition, basically. And before security could even get to it, they knew that with all those people around there that were willing to throw down, that he was not going to come to them without bumps and bruises. And boy, did he, because the first person to meet him in the ring was former UFC top 10 contender, Travis Brown, Ronda Rousey's husband, who is admittedly, I think he's retired now, but even out of his prime, that's a six foot seven, 255 pound guy who hits like a cinder block. He's got several knockouts under his resume. Um, One particularly brutal one of Stefan Struve that still replays in my head every time I think Travis Brown. And imagine that guy pounding on your head when you're like this 135-pound soaking wet dude. You know? And then on top of that, as the stars are taking him to security, um... Dash Wilder, one of the current talents at the time, he was one of the Raw Tag Team Champions, just bus driver fucking uppercuts the guy. Just, you're going to jail now, thwack! And almost knocks him unconscious. Like, it's it was a bad hit. But the guy deserved it. Fuck him. I'm hitting the button. Yep. Fuck him. So yeah, needless to say, when I was watching, I got pissed. Brett's one of my favorites ever. So, he w- he was the man. I-, I loved Bret Hart, man. All right, next question. Um, Crystal Wing wants to know, for D&D, what is the best way for me to write a Dead Space-styled campaign? Do I write the whole thing in order, or do I just focus on the key moments and make up the rest during play? The latter. Do not railroad the party, because they will always try yeah. to fuck with you. Especially if they know that you are trying to put strict boundaries on what the fuck they do. Yeah, the the DM, or I will say right now that the best DMs are the ones who can come up with shit on the fly. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep your keep your main uh, points, and if any sort of derailing happens, make sure there's always a way to get back to your main points. Yeah. Because if you if you can't do that and and it goes around and and don't skip any either unless like there is some crazy thing and this is extremely fucking rare but some crazy thing that happens that allows you to skip a point um unless something like that happens and knowing a dead space type campaign is probably not going to make sure that you do everything in order come back around to your key moments Yep, that's basically the long and short of it. All right. Next one. Um, Incel Mafioso wants to know, thoughts on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2? I'm cautiously optimistic, but I have concerns towards people involved in the project, mostly pertaining to their social justice leanings. So, Didn't we have a question about this? Recently? Sort of, so I'll just reiterate real quick, because new stuff has come out since then. Because uh, I know Autist Whisper no, asked okay. about it. Um, Chris Avalone is writing it. Hmm. And that alone has me interested. Because Chris is, again, the best writer in video games. You've certainly sang his praises many a time. Well, I've talked to him. I like him. He's a nice guy. Really? Yeah. I, I, like, the two weeks before I got fired from Blistered Thumbs, mm. I interviewed him. Had it recorded and everything. Was going to put Very it nice. up after the new year, because I knew that in January we would be short on stories. I get mm -hmm. fired. So it yeah. never aired. Somebody, somebody actually asked me for it at one point. I'm like, fuck you. So. But yeah, I with Avalon attached to it, I'm not too worried. He's, uh, he's a really good writer. He doesn't really uh, cram social justice down your throat. So yeah, I'm, not, I'm not really that worried about it. At least not right now. Fair enough. Koopa's Revenge Home wants to know, thoughts on the Hollywood Reporter saying that if even though MK11 censored the costumes, the game is still too violent and should be cut back. Inevitable. <sighs> inevitable, inevitable, inevitable. And this was my issue with the art director being an asshole to fans. Is, um... That... I personally, again, don't... I thought it was really silly for one angry gamer to write a fucking think piece about the fact that Katana is a cup size smaller. Like, really? Like, she's still got ass. Like, why, why does it matter? She still <laughs> looks like a woman. She's just more fit. Which, she's a martial artist. Like, that makes more sense. They, they're they admittedly going for a more photorealistic style this time around, which I'm fine with. You know, but they were being assholes about it. Like, oh, it's more respectful. Fuck, you're, you're cutting their heads off. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. So, but this is the thing, is that, and, and that, that's something that Hollywood Reporter is going to pick up on, is that you can, you can alter your costumes to be respectful and virtue signal about it, but they're still going to complain about the fact that you're cutting people's heads off or disemboweling them. I mean, for Christ's sake, Noob, Cy Noob Cybot has a finisher where he... Cuts your gut open, your intestines spill out, he casts his shadow self into you, and it splits you in half from the out, from the inside out. Do you really think that the feminists are going to be impressed by the fact that, mil that somebody went down a cup size? They're not. You're killing women. It's all that matters to them. So... Yeah. yeah, I am. I am very much of the opinion that um, that will always be where they go. I thought it was very telling when Anita Sarkeesian, who is sad to say a thought leader among left lefty uh, uh, techie leftists, um, stated that oh, it would be so nice if you know Fallout had all this customization for everything but the guns or something like that. And I'm like, you're missing the point. But this is how they think. This is how leftists think constantly. Is they 
you know, they, they want this flowery unicorn fart powered utopia that they think only Bernie Sanders can provide them and it's never going to happen. Hey, there's not enough putting in the world to make that happen. No. All right, another one for me. Um, Swordsman 100 wants to know, thoughts on Arthur Maxson? I think he's a great leader for the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel. Um, In Fallout 4, I really liked Maxson. I liked how he was an old-school Brotherhood leader. Because the Brotherhood in Fallout 3 was basically... Or really felt like um, a recreation of the United States military being put in fallout as opposed to the Brotherhood. Because the Brotherhood are not there to as a police force or, or, or as a military for the people. They are there to preserve technology. Because they think that humanity, that basically that um, humanity can't be trusted with it. That, that, um, they're also genetic purists. They hate mutants. That includes ghouls, that includes st- super mutants, etc. So, I mean, they, they really are like the Imperium of Man in, um, in, in 40K. I mean, their armor is even similar. So, the idea that they, that, um, they would su- you know they would suddenly you know, or they would stay this course of this you know super idealistic leader forever i thought would w- was stupid so i was kind of glad that they killed off the lion's bloodline and had maxon take take over you know it it really feels much more like the old school brotherhood they feel like a paramilitary unit that has an objective a long term objective for what they're doing as opposed to um this local branch that is completely devoid of the original mission of, of the, you know, the original membership of the Brotherhood of Steel. You know, I liked the, I liked that idea. I liked that they were also the, the branch that's evolving. Whereas the West coast branch, you see them in fallout new Vegas is dying off because they wouldn't recruit, you know, things along those lines. So I, I find that to be intriguing. I, I love, um, the brotherhood in fallout four a lot more than I liked them in three. So, so yeah, I like Maxon. I, I like that he's hard nosed because he really does come across as a, as a commanding officer, but he also comes across at, he doesn't come across as completely unreasonable, but he's obviously a man who is very driven by his mission and he will, and the mission is more important than the people to him. And there's some, I won't spoil it for people who haven't played fallout four, but there's some pretty intense scenes with him. And a different member of the Brotherhood of Steel you find a very dark secret about. And, yeah, it's it's crazy stuff. I, 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 I like I like Arthur Maxon quite a bit as a character. So, all right. This is one that I, I'm going to let Hatman take lead on because I've been answering everything in entertainment. <laughs> Just about. So, do we think that Disney made a big mistake shutting down LucasArts and giving the game rights to EA? Yes. Yes, 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 absolutely yes. They had an in-house studio for it. They could have recruited more talent, and and now it looks like they're they're bringing like they're bringing Lucas Arts back as like Lucas Games or Lucasfilm Games or something like that. Yeah. What the fuck was the point? Don't outsource to one of the most hated companies worldwide. Why in the holy fuck? Uh, no, especially on an exclusivity license. I mean, do everything in house. You 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 save on having to share all the fucking profit revenue anyway. <sighs> That's just from a business perspective. No, they they fucked up. They fucked up. Yeah, I'm really big on if you want to franchise out your film or comic book franchise for video games, go with people who have a good pitch. Don't go with just, like, a company. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all we have for entertainment. Live on the politics. Yep. Uh, Koopa's Revenge wants to know, 
Considering that this may happen with Assange, why do you t why do tyrants and authoritarians never seem to learn not to make martyrs? That's a good question. Um, I think that oftentimes people who are authoritarian are not sensible people who really think of things in different directions. They have their goal and they're going to go towards it 120% and damn the consequences and damn whoever gets in the way. Um, because one thing I always found really, really strange was, or really interesting was um, if you compare um, Chelsea Manning to Edward Snowden. Because again, we've already talked about Assange. I'm kind of done talking about Assange. Because mm -hmm. um, cause my opinion's not going to change. If he did really aid Manning, he deserves jail time. If he didn't, then he doesn't. So, but with, with Snowden, Obama hated him. Hated him. Yeah. And had he not been given sanctuary by Russia, um, he likely would have um, been extradited here and then probably would, you know, face, you know, trial, high crimes and misdemeanors, all that other fun stuff, mm -hmm. um, which he didn't deserve. He blew the whistle on something that was terrifying. Yeah. And a, a policy that, keep in mind, too, Obama was, like, after it got out, had that press conference like the day after mm -hmm. talking about, you know, how it was is totally necessary, but oh, we're going to, we're, we're still going to bear with what we do. And then it just got fucking worse. Yes. Uh, <laughs> ties back to Assange because uh, last year, I believe might've been a year before we got the vault seven files, which showed even worse fucking surveillance. Yeah. Uh, after then. Oh God. I remember vault seven. Yeah. That was disturbing. Yeah. All the hype leading up to it, too. It's like, oh, shit, what's going to be... No, in that's then? always the twi the weird yeah. thing about Assange for me. Is is that it's like... It it was the, the way he handled the documents given to him by Manning in regards to the Iraq war. Because I understand you're against war. That's fine. But not redacting some of that information really put people in danger. And that will always kind of be my big hang-up with him. If that had never happened then I have a feeling a lot of people actually would probably have a much better opinion of him. But... Seems that way. Anarchist, you know? So, but, no, in this particular case, um, I, I I am very much, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's very interesting how people react to those who leak this kind of information um, and how much confirmation bias is in it because Obama sent, or, um, pardoned, for better or worse... Um, Chelsea Manning. Mm -hmm. Oh, commuted the, the sentence. Commuted the sentence. And that that pissed a lot of people off. And it's, it's very, very strange that he would do that for Manning, but would not do that for Snowden. Well, we all know why. It's because what Manning did was to get at Bush, mm -hmm. and Snowden crossed Obama. So the different the my my whole thing is, is that I I really wish that when it comes to these these people these whistleblowers or what have you that we would take them on what they do not who they piss off because I I think that a lot of people you know they they like Assange a lot more now because of the DNC leaks mm -hmm. you know like that like Hannity is a really good example of that I think the only reason that Sean Hannity all of a sudden loved Julian Assange is because of the DNC leaks you know. Yeah, that's, I mean, even even Trump, um, like right after the, the DNC leaks happened, he was like, I love WikiLeaks. Yeah, and then and now he's acting stupid about yeah. it. Yeah. So. Also, um, Honest Whisperer wants to know, thoughts on the accusation towards DLI being a scam and will this harm PewDiePie's brand? So this is kind of a both thing. Mm -hmm. Um that's the thing. Like, I know some people who use DLive. I probably won't just because, A, I'm not a big fan of, like, splitting the audience because people seem to just like staying on one website. Yeah. I'm not going to tell them not to. So. 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to think about him. I, I don't know enough to have an opinion. I, I don't know a damn thing about D Live, so I didn't even know it was a, it was a thing until uh, the news about PewDiePie moving over there happened. So yeah. Uh, John Doe wants to know, what is it with so many of the free speech crowd tearing down other freedoms like artistic expression? Not quite sure what who you're referencing there. Read that again? Said, what is it with so many in the quote-unquote free speech crowd tearing down other freedoms like artistic expression? Like... Who? I don't yeah, I, um, do us a favor. Um, who was it? That that was John Doe. Uh, give us, give us that question again next week. Uh, remind Brainbox that this is the the one for the overflow with yeah. a little bit more context. I'd like yeah. to know who you're talking about so I can so I can go ahead and so we can answer that for you. Yeah. Um, Brian Gilmartin wants to know thoughts on the clown Pepe meme. Hey man, I don't pay as much attention to the internet. What 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 is what is this? I've seen the Hong Kong thing a lot. Yeah, that's that's part of it. Um, you know, we're we're living in clown world now. You know, everything is is upside down, inside out. It's clown world because everything is fucking crazy. Mm. Um, from what I understand, um, it really blew up after because I hadn't even fucking heard of it, and then um. Oh, hell. Jared Holt with, what's his organization, like Far Right Watch or something? Yeah. Um, he he published an, an article about it saying, oh, the, the alt-right is now using clown imagery to recruit. And I'm like, oh my fucking god. So now that's, of course, spread like wildfire because, you know, you, you use it to, to own the retards. Huh. It's... It's whatever. I see nothing. Uh, I know it's not okay saying. Thing. It's it's another thing like the the okay thing or drinking milk or whatever. It's just it is what it is. It's a fucking meme. It's a meme to own the idiots. Incel Mafioso wants to know what's your opinion on the female scientist getting too much credit for the black hole photo. When a male computer scientist did most of the work. Seems men can't catch a break. Wasn't even that good of a photo. Well, it was a zoomed in photo. The, the whole, the actual thing was like a, of course, a big fucking thing. Um, sort of like how the, the pictures of Pluto that we had for the longest fucking time were just specks, basically. Hmm. Um, it's, it's people, it's people rushing to give credit. It, it was a whole fucking team that worked on that. So one person alone does not deserve. What's his name? That was part of the New Horizons project. Was it Alan Stern? I think. Yes, Alan Stern. Um, he doesn't deserve the sole credit for for that project. I mean, that's it, it's a whole fucking team of people. But if you wear a bowling shirt with oh women my on it, fucking god. Then you're you're Satan. Yeah. Well, I can't believe Shirtstorm was a fucking thing. That was peak retardation. Yeah, and oddly enough, it was one of the anti-Gamergate guys who fucking started it. Yeah, well, what a surprise. Yeah, Chris Plant, I think is his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got into an Hard argument rock. with him on Twitter about it, and then he ended up blocking me. It was hilarious, because I made him look like oh, an boy. asshole. Because I think at one point he had said on Twitter that he thought that Liana Kersner was a man. Oh my god. And I god. drilled him on it. And, yeah, then he blocked me. So, yeah, fuck him. But, fuck um... F- yeah, yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. I love that button. Um, <laughs> I do too. But, yeah, the, uh... The... Uh, god... I, I wanted to. I, one of the funniest things that I ever saw was um, back when I did that article for Truth Revolt. Andrew Claven uh, did a video on Gamergate, if I recall correctly, and he was wearing the same shirt. 
the uh, the shirt storm shirt. I just I was just standing in awe of the video. I'm like, Clavin, you're you're a madman. I love you. <laughs> I almost yeah. bought one myself. I'm not even gonna lie. It's just they, it's shipped from like the the lady who made it. It lives in Britain, so it's being shipped overseas. So I ended yeah. up not. I doing think you ran out of the fabric too. Yeah. Well, a bunch of people bought them. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I believe she also did, like, Vivian James hoodies and stuff as well. Yeah, something like that, so, but... Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, Kale Bach wants to know, Thoughts on people saying we should have a parliament system so all the parties can have a voice. Looking at the UK, it seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Um, Not a big fan of parliament. It depends... The only parliaments that I've ever seen get anything done recently has been Israel's. That's because it's mostly right wing. It depends. We need to... I'm, I'm moving more and more into the idea of... Um, oh, shit. What's it fucking called? The, the choice voting, where you vote by... A choice instead of your normal first-past-the-post system. If, if only because I think the two-party system is starting to wear out its welcome. Of course, then again, that could come to bite us in the ass because we know the uh, the Democratic Socialists would jump all over that shit. Yes, so. exactly. Then again, I still see the Democratic Party being supplanted by them in the future anyway, so I figure it's a matter of time. Yeah. But no, I, I hate the parliamentary system. It's, 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 and you think that the current system in the United States, like, it, our, our system is bu- built for deadlock by design. So that if, yeah. if a law is going to be passed, it has to be a popular law. You know, it has to be something that makes sense to do. Mm-hmm. Parliament is deadlocked because there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And they're all assholes. Theresa May is the only good thing that happened to Britain in the longest time, I'm noticing. Why? Because everyone has figured out that... She was she's right? <laughs> she's right about what? Everything? She called she's... the socialist takeover of the EU years, like, years ago. Yeah, but she's still hampering on Brexit. And she can't... She, if, if she can't respect the, the will of the people like that, what fucking good is she? Wait, did I say Theresa May? Yeah, you said Theresa May. I didn't mean Theresa May. I meant the Iron Lady. Um, uh, Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Th- Thatcher is who I meant, not Theresa May. No, Margaret Thatcher was right. I'm sorry about that. Which she was. Uh, one thing I always loved about Thatcher, by the way, she used socialist as an insult. It's like, yep. Yep. Okay, Micah Clark wants to know, do you believe in the nine spiritual gifts as described in the Corinthians? I sometimes go to a charismatic church that focuses on them a bit. Well, they are biblical. I don't, I don't like, think about them very much. Because I have noticed that, because there's, and I criticized this when I was in college, is there are these tests that they will do. Where you answer these... It's a freaking questionnaire that says what your gifts are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is dumb. So I filled out random answers one time. <laughs> I got all of them. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm not Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, I I am not of the opinion that it's something you should really focus on. You know... My, my whole thing is, is that, um, all God wants is you and wants you to follow him. You will have natural talents and abilities that you, that will benefit a church. But if you focus too much on what your supposed spiritual gifts are, you're going to get a giant head. And I see this constantly is I would, I would go to a church and then they would do this freaking test and then the next thing you know, somebody who scored high on leadership is bossing everyone around. Somebody who scored high on prophecies trying to predict the future. 
It's ridiculous. Now oh, they'll get me started on speaking in tongues. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it is a nightmare. And I wish churches would stop it. Then again, that's generally why I don't, like, commit myself to a congregation anymore. Because it's a lot of humans in a room. Whenever you got a lot of humans in a room, there's a lot of stupid. And I have zero tolerance for such things. So, I say that in Christian love. (laughs) And oddly enough, that's the last question. Does it? Wow. Yeah. Not a lot of detail this week. Not quite sure what I'll even title this one. So, well, I'll figure, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Oh. So we do appreciate you guys stopping by, watching, Mm -hmm. giving us questions, as always. Uh, Good news is that we are, of course, still working on the t-shirt stuff. We are hoping to get a couple more designs uh, before we bring the, uh, bring it to you guys' um, wallets, basically. Mm -hmm. So logistics are getting worked out. Logistics are getting worked out on comic book stuff as well which is always good. So things are progressing. Yep. Um, keep in mind also, as far as shirts go, because I've had some people ask questions on, on the Twitters and whatnot. Yes, we can order tall sizes. Yes, we can order women's shirts. Yes, we can do shirts that are absolutely huge. I mean, we can order up to 9X and possibly even 12XL. Um, so if Jim that- Sterling decides to buy a shirt, we can definitely help him out. <laughs> I don't know. 12, 12 X might be a little, mm-hmm, a little too small, but anyway, yeah. um, but no, that's, that's the biggest that we've ever printed on. So I know for a fact we can, we can do that, but yeah, um, we can take care of you. We can. Indeed. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and take off. We do appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, etc. If you enjoyed the, the episode, but we're going to take off. My name is Micah Curtis. There's the hat man. See you guys next week. Dave's fault. Dave's fault.